5 years, several thousand dollars and over 10,000 Lego pieces. Today, I will show my entire fantasy city, local residents, and, of course, city defenders. With you as always Papa Lego, let's go! The entire settlement is 112 pins long and 64 pins wide, which is equivalent to 7 standard Lego plates. There are 3 large buildings, a market square, several fields, stables and a pigsty, and a large academy of magicians is being built nearby. I did not add a large castle from a recent review to my city, since it will be a new, second settlement of the followers of the light. The city can be entered from several directions. The main entrance is located on the north side. At the entrance there is a stable where travelers can leave their horses and a groom from a local tavern will periodically come to water and feed them. On the other side of the road, immediately from the very wall of the last house, farm fields begin. In this field, locals grow pumpkins and you can see how one of the farmers has already begun to harvest. The first building is a whole complex in the likeness of modern shopping and entertainment centers. Two two-story buildings, connected by a wide arch. It is decorated with lion statues and a decorative border on top, and next to the passage two city guards are on duty. They are assembled from old minifigures from the Kingdom series in the colors of the defenders of the city faction. Since the settlement is located in the forest, I decided to stick with green and brown colors, and so that they would not be bored, I added a true friend to them, a guard dog. On the first floor of the left side of the complex there is a tavern, which can be seen from the character coming out of it with a bottle in his hands and a cheerful mood. And next to it there is a post with an announcement about the search for a local criminal. On the second floor of the tavern there are several hotel rooms for travelers. In the room above the arch there are apartments of the owner of the tavern and his family. For a long time I didn't have enough parts to equip all the interior spaces, but recently I bought a lot of parts and accessories to fix this. In the right wing on the ground floor there is a shop for wizards, where the magicians of this city, as well as its guests, can purchase various magic potions, tomes with spells, various accessories and a lot of interesting things for practicing magic. A detail from the Harry Potter Christmas calendar, a sign with the name Leaky Cauldron fits perfectly here. The store is owned by two goblin brothers, also borrowed from the Harry Potter series, but slightly customized for a fantasy theme. On the second floor is the apartment of the brothers themselves with balconies overlooking the courtyard. I decided to make the roof of the entire complex in the form of tiles, but for this you need a lot of details, so my city never stops building and expanding. But I already had enough details to hang a decoration in the form of multicolored flags between the buildings. For it, the only non-original part of my entire fantasy world is used the usual purchased rope. The entire adjacent building is a forge from set 21325, completely preserved in its original form. So I won't dwell on it for a long time, I'll only show my little joy, these are birds that I hunted for a very long time, and from a set of a large castle you can take a nest for them, made from a piece of a fur collar. The blacksmith's family is also larger here than in the set. Now he has a wife, parts for which I took from an elf from the first series of minifigures, as well as two children. One younger, very small, and one older, a son who plays with a slingshot shot, shooting running chickens with it and playing with local kids. Among them is the daughter of one of the ordinary poor farmers and one girl from the forest elves. Behind the forge itself, in a small part of the city, there is a dense, sprawling forest. There are several tall trees and a lot of different decorative elements. I tried to add more greenery and could not resist the desire to cram everything that I had here. In principle, as in the whole city, as a whole, there is a falcon from the new minifigure series and a beehive. Lots of grass and plants, different living creatures and a big brown bear that got too close close to the city. But even such a large and dangerous predator is not afraid of the locals, because they are guarded by the most accurate archers of Caldaria, who are also good hunters. Among them, of course, are several kustones made from parts from a centaur, fawn, barbarian, and various accessories. And the detachment is supplemented by several faithful hunting dogs. The busiest place in the settlement is, of course, the market square. Merchants from different regions, local residents, and guests of the city gathered here. Here you can buy all the necessary food, repair the tools in the forge, or just relax while watching the performances of itinerant artists. Among the shops, there is a cellar of fish and other seafood. The assortment includes lobsters, various crabs, and, of course, the fish itself. I assembled the cellar from parts from the Pirates of the Caribbean and an old turban. Nearby is a portable stage of itinerant musicians. Many locals gathered to watch their performance, including two goblin brothers from the magic shop. But in such a crowd, one should not forget about petty thieves. One of these is just now carefully opening the pocket of one of the brothers with a knife and 
taking out gold coins from it. In the market, you can also buy ordinary vegetables from one of the farmers who brought their crops to the square. He has a whole cartload of carrots, assorted berries, and some mandrake roots, which I used as regular vegetables. In the center of the market, there is a fountain with a tall and beautiful statue of the founder of the city of magicians. Beautiful flowers grow nearby, and small frogs chose the place. The wandering jester, whom I showed in one of my previous videos, also found a place here. From the third building, I decided to gather a garrison for my defenders of the city. At the very top there is an observation deck, and on it is a medieval post office. Scouts can send breaking news using tamed owls, just like in the Harry Potter movie. One floor below is the garrison commander's room, and for the windows I used one of my ideas from previous videos. The first floor is built in the shape of the letter L. In one part there is a barracks for soldiers, in the center is an armory, and at the other end is a dining room with a kitchen. In this building, I have already begun to equip the interior, so there is something to show. I started, of course, with the most important thing, the kitchen with the dining room. Important because I myself love to eat. There is also a fireplace for cooking soup and a long table to accommodate as many people as possible. I really like the details of spoons, which became much more after the appearance of large castle sets. Well, nearby, on the street, there is another stable, but there is already room in it only for the horses of the garrison. Now it is empty, as the horsemen went to accompany the king on his journey. Near the stables and around the building, the warriors go about their business. Basically, of course, they train in duels between themselves or on training dummies. And over the city itself on a big eagle flies with the task of a combat sorcerer from the Academy of Magicians. I was lucky that the Marvel minifigure series used transparent parts like this, which allowed me to create a flying effect for my character. The figurine bases were also useful, they made a great roof, but over time I will replace it to make it more detailed. And to detail the settlement, in addition to trees, I made a few more bushes from large pieces of greenery and small leaves. At one time, I was lucky to bay a large batch to Legoland pick and bricks. I decorated the road with various gray details of stones and paving stones, along which the traveler goes about his business. I made one traveler from Santa's elf details, a priest from a Voldemort figurine and a shepherd leading his small flock of sheep to a paddock field. And also, you can see a whole squad of wood elves who came to the city. On the other side of the road, almost the entire territory is occupied by a flax field. From it, local residents will be able to weave threads and sew clothes for themselves. In the near future, I want to build another house on the ground floor of which a weaving workshop will be located. To make linen easier to assemble, I came up with a standard scythe design for my minifigure. Just like from death itself, and for the character himself, as well as in general, the details from the scarecrow minifigures from the Batman series are great. From a similar one, I assembled a sick homeless man who begged coins for food near the city fountain. There is a small paddock for piglets next to the field. From an old chest I made a feeder, and for the fence you can use droid hands or standard stick parts. I collected and looked for pigs for a very long time, so they all turned out so different. There are already a lot of things in the city, and some buildings or homemade products simply do not fit in the settlement itself. However, I also made a carriage for the king, in which he travels to other settlements, or it used by advisors and treasurer when he travels to collect tribute throughout the kingdom. The carriage is always accompanied by a detachment of horsemen from several warriors and a commander, a battle mage. Also, I used a great riverboat design idea from the Hobbit movie set. By combining two standard trays and adding a small sail from a pirate ship, I was able to assemble an excellent riverboat for fishing or traveling along the river and trading in other settlements. And of course, what city of magicians can do without an academy of magic and wizardry? As a basis, I took a Harry Potter set, a large hall of Hogwarts. Unfortunately, in the original assembly it is made in the form of a dollhouse and has rather rare details in the design, which is why I have not been able to complete it for several years. However, I already made the tower taller, started building an extension and replaced all the windows on the side with medieval mosaics. Once I saw this idea on the internet, I immediately went to a bricklink seller I knew and bought almost all the brown windows and similar transparent details from him. Having already purchased building materials in the near future, I plan to make the town square wider, add one residential building with a weaving workshop on the ground floor, and build a mill for grinding wheat. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. With you as always was Papa Lego. For all you cool minifigs, and I'm not saying goodbye.